away Days burn disintegrate Years roll along in faith Don't let them slip away Right here, right now, today These are the good old days Right here, right now, today And hey, these are the good old days In 1987, Dolph Lundgren starred in the live-action, big-budget, Masters of the Universe movie by Canon. That movie did not do well, and was one of the final nails in the coffin to the Masters of the Universe line. Unlike Dolph Lundgren, we here at Go Figure get to revisit Eternia today with Mastering the Universe Part 2. From 1981 to 1987, the Masters of the Universe action figures dominated every toy aisle across the land and occupied every subsequent toy box as well. Now in every household that had Masters of the Universe action figures in it, there were some unwritten rules, some traditions, some rituals if you will. First off, if you had a friend come over and you were playing He-Man at your house, you had a home house advantage. That meant you got to be He-Man. The next of these rituals was you put all your action figures in a pile and one by one choose who you got to use. Fingers crossed that you get to pick your favorites. So today, we're going to look at three of my favorites and do some quick fixes on them. Those favorites are Trapjaw, Buzz Off, and Beast Man. And if you as well like Trapjaw, Buzz Off, and Beast Man, check out the link in our description to go to our t-shirt store where there's some brand new t-shirts featuring these characters and so much more. All right, so the first figure we're gonna look at today is Buzz Off. And Buzz Off was my favorite non-He-Man hero. Just the idea of him being a bee and a, and, a, and a hero was really cool to me. The claws I loved. I thought they were better on him than they were on Clawful, but he was a cool guy. However, when you buy him nowadays, he never has his wings. So we're gonna make him some new wings. So the first step in any of our recreations is to find proper material. We came across this thin yellow binder at a local dollar store. So we're gonna take that and put it to the Cricut machine and I think it's gonna be just perfect. The next step is of course to open up our Cricut design space. Again, if you wanna learn more about the Cricut, check out our Banshee episode. It really goes into depth detail. We're going to import our Buzz Off Wing design. We made this design from scratch, and all of our designs are downloadable from our Facebook page, so feel free to go there and uh, get yourself some Buzz Off Wings. We're going to size them properly. These wings are about uh, four inches from tip to tip, is what I like to, to have them at. And then, of course, we're going to take that, and we're going to double it, make a copy of it, so Buzz Off can have two wings. Once we get them the size you want, we just put our material into our Cricut, and let it do its thing, cutting out these wings. All right, so here's our um, cricketed buzz off wings here that we have out of our, uh, our dollar store binder. So what I'm gonna do is I just make a quick cut here. I don't make it go all the way through and that way you get all this cool design here. Um, so I just put a little cut in it like that. And once you get it right to the edge, you can fold it over and just peel it out and they'll pop right out. All right, so here's we popped out our, our wings here, and you can see they have their little uh, slots done. So you should be able to just take them and slot them right on there. And then Buzz Off has his wings again. <laughs> All right, so now in prepping for this week's video uh, and figuring out how we were going to do this, I made some prototype wings of just whatever I had kicking around. And so the prototype wings were the same kind of material, but it was just clear because that's what I had. But the clear ones, when you put them on, kind of look awesome as well. So I don't know which ones I actually like better on Buzz Off, the yellow or the clear. The clear kind of look more like they would if you use a real insect. So let us know in the comments which ones you think look better? I don't see how you are gonna stop me. Yeah. All right, my favorite villain was Trapjaw. Uh, he had an articulated jaw. He had this mechanical arm. He looked like he was made of spare parts, kind of like from a Mad Max world. He was awesome. You can get 
this trap jaw figure relatively cheap because he's missing his um, arm attachments and he's missing his uh, skull belt. And again, even just like this, he looks great on your shelf. He's got great colors, he kind of pops, he's got articulated, again, his articulated jaw was amazing. Um, and this can just be used as a cannon if you're a kid. Um, but we're gonna kind of make some parts for him to get him back to display quality. Now in finding the material for trap jaw, we came across a few different options. So we got them all. There's only a dollar each, so we've got a couple different samples and we're gonna put them all through the Cricut and see what one looks the best. All right, so we're going to import our design for Trapjaw's belt. Uh, once again, you can download all of our designs at our Facebook page, including this one. We're going to get it into our Cricut Design Space digital canvas. And once it's in there, we're going to actually make four copies of it because we're going to cut it out of four different um, kinds of material on our Cricut pad. So we can pick whichever one looks the best when we're done. All right, so this is the material that we chose out of our options. Uh, I think this green looks the best on Trap Truck compared to the other ones. And so again, just like Buzz Off's wings, we just make a cut right to our uh, outline there, and then it should just snap right off. If you crease it, and it should, there you go, pull right out. Okay, so again, you can see it's all punched out here, and that's kind of how his belt is going to fit on. Now because this is so uh, r rigid and, st and springy, to hold it on there, what I'm actually going to do is put some holes in it with this stapler, like that, and like that, and then pull this these staples out and use those holes to wire it together. So there we go, there's what Trap Jaw's belt looks like when it's all done and on there. All right, so next we're gonna work on his arm here, these attachments for his arm. And the key is gonna be finding something that fits in there that can have multiple attachments go with it. So what I found is these Paper Mate one millimeter pens. And so if you just take out the uh, top of it here, and we're gonna pull out the um, ink cylinder and we're gonna pull out the pen tip, and we're gonna be left with a black piece of plastic here. Um, now when you do that, I found it's best to do that over a sink and you run water through it to wash out any excess ink, but then you're left with a black um, piece of plastic that's gonna fit great, and we're just gonna trim it down here so it's just a little bit and it will fit into his arm end perfectly. Okay, so here's our trim down um, pen tip, and you can see that it will fit right into his arm socket great and it just looks like a natural extension of uh, his mechanical arm. So now the trick is gonna be to get attachments in there. Now, you can recreate the actual ones that he had, and you can do that quite easily, but you can see here, um, I have just a bunch of things from the dollar store, some accessories from, from some cheap toys I have. So I have the, these accessories here that I've bought, and I'm just gonna kinda cut them up and kit bash them and see what fits in here. I took some of those accessories and uh, just kind of mashed them all together. And so here is uh, one here. This is the end of a, a shotgun that was for oversized for an action figure. And do things like that. And you can easily see how he can have like a, a laser cannon there. And that instant looks way better than him not having anything. So I made up a couple. I made up this laser cannon. Um, I made up this uh, knife. I always think it's very funny when a guy has a mechanical arm with a knife on the end of it because it's so unnecessary. There was, uh, there was a guy in Judge Dredd who had a mechanical arm with a little blade on the end of it. and It was very, very, very funny. So that, that is uh, kind of very 80s looking. Um, I did take just a, a hook to hang up a picture with and put it in there. So you did recreate kind of his little hook, hook hand because I thought that was going to be kind of neat. And then just the end of one of the things came up with this little laser gun here. I thought uh, it was very trap jaw looking. So without a whole lot of effort and just a few pens, you can have a bunch of different accessories for your chapter. Ah, but Skeletor, it wasn't my fault. I did everything you told me. And... All right, next we have a Beast Man. He was Skeletor's main henchman, and he was just such a cool design. I loved everything about this figure. He was, I actually bought him as a child before I got Skeletor, because I liked him so much. Now, he also had maybe the lamest accessory in any of the, <laughs> any of the He-Man figures. He had a whip that was previously a part of the big gym line. So it didn't fit his hand. He had to hold onto the handle of the whip, as opposed to the, the actual whip. Um, it looked really, really bad. Uh, but it's iconic and it's kind of what makes him 
what he is. So we could easily make up a better whip than they did. But there's something charming about that, that design, so we're going to recreate that design today. What we're going to use to do that is the end, this pen that we use for trap jaw. We're going to cut the end of this pen off, and that's going to be the handle of the whip that we're going to use. So I'm just going to grab a knife and chop that off. So anytime you're using a knife, you want to use a sharp knife, so it's easier to use, but you also want to be very, very careful that you don't cut yourself. But this just slides right through there. And there's going to be the handle of our uh, whip. All right, now the next thing we're going to need to get Beastman his whip is something you'd never, ever see coming. A ninja, a deadly, deadly ninja. This ninja came from our local Dollar Tree, um, and he's just a good source of soft but durable plastic. So we are going to cut up his base to get some plastic pieces for our handle. That's what we need. And this you can give to your sister for Christmas. So again, we're just gonna trim down a little piece of this plastic, which again is nice and soft, but it's also durable to act as a handle for Beast Man to hang on to. And then we're just gonna cut off a couple little ends to build up the rest of the hilt. Okay, so when working with uh, super glue, I use a thick gel because it's got a little more um, easy to work with. And I put some in the cap or a cap somewhere. And then I just dip things into it it's because I'm, I'm usually using very, very small things. So I like to uh, be able to, to dip it in and uh, have a little more control over it. All right, so we have our handle here. So I'm just gonna dip that into the glue a little bit there, a little bit there. I'm gonna fix it onto the side of this. Uh, to the pen. And let that dry. All right, so here's our handle that we made up for our uh, Beastman whip. And just like Mattel, all we're gonna do there is put a piece of black thread through it or black string. I'm gonna put a couple knots in the end so it doesn't go all the way through the uh, pen tube and then we should be off to the races. So, and there we have it. We have Beastman and his uh, whip for lack of a better term. It's not the whip I would have made, but it's the one that Mattel made. So we're going to use it. So there you go. There's our fix for Buzz Off, Beast Man, and Trap Jaw. If you like what we did today, if you had just as much fun as we do, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment on the video. Let us know what you want to see us fix next time on Go Figure. Mm -hmm.